So one of my viewers had asked me, you know, what are the best settings for vlogging on their Olympus camera? And I think they indicated they have the EM1 Mark III and the 12 millimeter F2, uh, both of which I don't have anymore. I just have my OM1 and the 12 to 40 Pro uh, F2.8. And they also indicated that they are having a little trouble with framing uh, because the 12 millimeter at arm's length is a little tight, right? You're basically going to get from the shoulders up. It's going to be a talking head video more than, say, like a vlogging video. Unfortunately, there's really no way around, you know, 12 millimeters at arm's length, right, for framing. You just need a wider lens. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, using my Panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter f4 lens and what that looks like because there's some additional settings we need to consider when we use a wider angle lens, uh, specifically the uh, IBIS. All right, now there's a lot of things we need to think about before we actually push the record button. Uh, and I'm gonna try and group them together in an order I think makes sense. Uh, but the first thing I like to do is think about the overall image quality, right? Am I gonna shoot in cinema 4K, full HD, regular 4K? What color profile am I gonna choose, like natural, muted, or maybe OM Log 400? Am I gonna shoot in 8-bit or 10-bit? All of those things that are kind of related to the overall look and feel of the image. And then the next thing I like to think about it are the autofocus and image stabilization modes, right? Uh, so what autofocusing modes work best? You know, do I choose all target points, face detect, autofocus, continuous autofocus with tracking, all of those things. And I'll make some recommendations there. Uh, and then also we're going to look at the sound settings. And I'll show you the sound setup that I use because it's going to vary greatly depending on, you know, what kind of microphones you're using. You know, are you using wireless mic like I am? etc. and how much post-processing you're going to do. And then finally we'll talk about the exposure settings because these are settings that you can't really set before you leave the house. Uh, these are settings that really when you get on site uh, that's when you check your exposure and make adjustments there. But we need to think about are we going to shoot an aperture priority, shutter priority, you know, manual mode uh, because exposure in video mode is very different on the Olympus cameras than uh, say the photo mode. All right, the first thing we want to do is just make sure that the camera's in movie mode on the mode dial here. And then we'll go into the movie menu. And the first line item here, we can choose our video codec. And you can choose between H.264 and H.265. And this is uh, unique to the OM1. Uh, all the previous Olympus cameras all record in H.264. However, with the OM1, we now can do H.265, which is a higher compression ratio but with superior image quality, supposedly. But either way, this is the only way you're going to be able to record 10-bit uh, video. When you do this, though, you're going to be limited to the, the log profile or HLG. Uh, so for general vlogging, though, I just recommend, you know, shoot an H.264. You can still have access to the OM log profiles if you want. But I think for vlogging, just to kind of minimize the amount of grading and things that you do in post-processing, uh, just shoot an H.264, and we'll talk about the uh, color profiles later. Now, the next line item is where we choose our video resolutions and frame rates. Uh, so right now it's set to Cinema 4K 24p. And uh, if we click over to the right, we can adjust this if we want to just regular 4K, full HD, or back to Cinema 4K. And this really only affects what you see in the Super Control Panel. Uh, but the next line item is our frame compression. Uh, so we're limited to long GOP in this particular uh, resolution. And then our frame rate, and we have some various choices here. So depending what you want to choose, but I generally I recommend you do uh, 24p or 23.98 is pretty much the same thing. And then uh, we have our slow, fast motion uh, settings here. Uh, make sure this is turned off. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you're going to slow down or speed up your video and you're going to lose audio. So make sure this is off. Now, if you want to record in full HD, uh, again, you know, we can change things here. But when you're in full HD, you have a choice of all I or long GOP. And I would recommend probably shooting in all I if you're going to shoot in full HD. That way you get the maximum image quality, which basically means you're going to get less pixelation when, when there's objects moving in the frame. Uh, and then frame rates, uh, the choices here are a little bit less when you're in all I. You can do 23.98, 25, or 29.97. Now, if you want to record in 60p, you're going to limit it to long GOP. And this is where you can go as high as uh, 59.94 or 60p. 
So let's put this in all I and set this to 23.98, which is basically 24p. And again, make sure this is turned off. All right, let's go back out. Uh, next line item is our shooting mode. And this is similar to our photo mode. So we have program, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual mode. Uh, I'm going to set this to shutter priority mode. And I'll explain this uh, later when we talk about exposure. And then flicker scan. If you're shooting indoors uh, with artificial lighting, like fluorescent lighting, uh, you may want to turn this on. But for general vlogging outdoors, you know, off is fine. Digital teleconverter just uh, zooms in for you. I would just leave this off. And let's go to the next page. Uh, picture mode. So here, because we chose 8-bit, we, we can choose like regular picture modes, like natural, muted, monochrome, even some art filters. Uh, so we'll talk about that when we go back to the color profiles. This is a flat profile. I don't really see a need to shoot in this um, because you also have access to OM Log 400. And when you're shooting in 8-bit, I don't see a need to shoot in OM Log 400. Uh, you might as well shoot in 10-bit, but uh, you know, if you have an EM1 Mark III or Mark II uh, and you do want to do color grading, then you can choose OM Log 400. But on the OM1, I would only choose this if I was shooting an H.265 and 10 bit. So I'm going to leave this on uh, just the uh, natural color profile here. Next line item View Assistant. This only applies when you're shooting in, say, one of the uh, OM Log 400s. Uh, and then White Balance, I set to Auto. And then uh, white balance, this is like your fine tuning. You can ignore this. Uh, and then keep warm colors. I make sure this is turned off because you can see a difference, even a little bit outdoors. But generally, this is for indoor lighting where you have incandescent lighting, you know, that's very warm or yellow. And this will sort of mitigate that quite a bit if you turn this on. So if you are recording indoors with a lot of uh, yellow incandescent lighting, then you may want to turn this on. All right, let's go to the uh, next page here. And um, this is where we can set our auto ISO default and make sure this is maxed out at 6400 and your minimum set that to 200. And then auto ISO, make sure this is turned on and noise filter. I like to leave on standard. Uh, if I'm going to be shooting in very low light, I might even turn this to high uh, because basically this helps you out in post processing. You know, you can maybe do some noise reduction and post-processing, but it really takes forever. So uh, it's best to do it in camera if you can, but generally speaking, standard is fine. If you know you're going to be shooting outdoors in bright sunlight constantly, you can turn this off, but it doesn't really affect uh, low ISO uh, recording so much as it does the high ISO recordings. Like if you're recording at ISO 6400 all the time, that's when you'll notice the most difference. All right, let's go to the next page here. Uh, now we're getting into image stabilization. What I recommend is uh, MIS-1. This will give you uh, sensor shift image stabilization plus digital. And this is very, very handy, particularly with wide angle lenses. You'll see that later when we do some uh, testing out back. And then uh, image stabilization level, I'm going to turn this to high. Now, if you're on a gimbal or something, you can turn all this off. But this is what I recommend for vlogging. And then next page are your sound recording settings, and we'll come back to this. So let's go to the next page. And then center marker, I like to have on. This doesn't show in your video, but when you're looking at back of the screen or in your EVF, you'll see a little crosshair in the center of the screen, which helps you uh, frame your image. Zebra patterns, I don't use so much for vlogging because you're not like in a controlled environment uh, with where you have artificial lighting and things that you can control. So this is... Um, not much help, in my opinion, uh, when you're out vlogging. And then red record frame, I like to have on. Again, I think these uh, last two settings here are unique to the OM-1. Uh, this I like to have on. That just creates this you know, red ring all the way around the frame when you're recording. So it just gives you a visual indication that you are recording or not. Now let's go into the autofocus menu and then we're going to go over here to page 4, Movie AF. And we can ignore all the other pages. So for vlogging, I recommend CAF. Uh, I don't recommend CAF plus tracking. I found this to be kind of unreliable. So use CAF, and then we're going to turn on face detect later in the super control panel if it's not already on. Now, CAF speed and sensitivity are kind of similar, but I'll do my best to explain. But let's look at the settings first. We have a plus one fast, zero, and then negative one slow. 
And the same thing for sensitivity, plus one high, zero, and then negative one for low. All right, so let me see if I can explain this. So let's say this is the camera, this is uh, you or the subject, and this is a building in the background. And I'll set the CAF speed to plus one, meaning fast. So when I move out of the frame, the camera is going to focus from where you were to the building in the background as quickly as it can. If I set it to negative one, it's going to try and focus from where you were to the building in the background at a slower pace. So it's a slower focus, push, or pull, right? Now for CF sensitivity, let's say I set it to plus one. When I move out of frame, the camera's going to immediately try and focus to the background. And it's going to do it at the speed that we sent for CAF speed. But let's say I set the sensitivity to negative one. When I move out of frame, the camera is going to hold on to this same focal point for a moment longer before it tries to focus on the background. So I feel like this is a little bit less jarring because when you're vlogging, you are constantly potentially moving in and out of frame. And you don't want the camera to go back and forth quickly necessarily, right? You might move out of frame for just a moment and then come back in. And the camera is going to stay focused on this point just long enough so it doesn't go to the background. So I hope that made sense. So what I recommend, CF speed will change to negative one. So it does nice, slow focus push and pulls. And then CF sensitivity will also set to negative one so that it stays on the same focal plane as long as possible before trying to refocus. All right, now let's look in the super control panel, confirm that we have CAF and face detect on. Now there's other things here uh, with eye detect. I would just ignore that because in vlogging, you're moving around a lot. So just face detection on is fine without eye detect. And then let's go over here to uh, the AF target mode. And I recommend using middle. I mean, you can change this to all or a small point, but basically when face detect is on, it's going to focus on your face no matter where it is in the frame, even outside this uh, green reticle. But move out of frame or point the camera into a different direction, it's going to try and focus on whatever's inside this green area. So if I have it set to all and I move the camera to another point without my face in it, it's going to focus on the first thing it sees. Or... If I want to focus on something very specific, I could use a small point. However, again, I recommend you use middle because let's say for whatever reason, uh, the camera loses face detect, even though your face is in the frame. All you have to do is kind of stand in the center of the frame and it'll reacquire focus because you told it to focus on anything here in the middle. Uh, versus if you pick something too large, it may still focus in the background, especially if you choose all. And if you choose small, that may not, you know, be able to focus on your shirt or something and your face will still be a little bit out of focus if you're standing too close. So middle, middle works best, I think, for vlogging. All right, now we're back outside and it's actually been a couple hours since I was last here, but this is the time you want to set your exposure. And earlier I'd recommended you shoot in shutter priority. And the reason for that is so that you can set the 180 shutter uh, angle, meaning we want to set our shutter speed to double whatever our frame rate is for our videos. So in this case, I'm shooting in Cinema 4K 24P. I want to set my shutter speed to 1 48th of a second. Uh, now, if you don't have 1 48th, you can use 1 50th. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. But I'm going to set my shutter speed to 1 48th. And as you can see now, hopefully that I'm at uh, 1 1 25th of a second right now, F5 at ISO 250. So. The fact that I'm in shutter priority, it's going to automatically adjust the aperture and ISO as needed to maintain this exposure, even though I change the shutter speed. So let's change it down to uh, 1 1 or 1 of a second. I keep saying 1 48th. Here we go. All right, so now I'm at 1 of a second, and you can see now my aperture is bumped up to f7.1, and we're at base ISO 200. So this is, uh, this is ideal because, like I said, as lighting changes, the camera will automatically do the exposure for you while you maintain that shutter angle. And the reason you do that is, you know, quote unquote, for that cinematic look, but also it helps maintain the overall look and feel of your video 
as you're going from scene to scene, the lighting's changing, particularly when we talk about motion, uh, we can maintain that same look and feel uh, when we can control the shutter angle. All right, now another option that a lot of videographers, vloggers like to have is to be able to control the depth of field, meaning you're going to need control over your aperture setting. And um, to do that, we're going to have to put the camera into full manual mode with auto ISO so that we can control the shutter speed to get our correct shutter angle and also uh, control the aperture so that we can, you know, set it to say f2.8 in this case to get a shallower depth of field, because right now it's bumped up to F10, as you can see. All right, so now we're in full manual mode, and I have the lens wide open at F2.8 to try to get that uh, shallower background. Uh, however, you can see we're way overexposed, because if you look, we have our shutter speed at 1 48th. We have our aperture set to, uh, looks like, yeah, F2.8. But our ISO is blinking at 200, meaning it can't lower the ISO any lower to get the correct exposure. Uh, so the options are right to raise the shutter speed or to raise the aperture, two options that we don't want to do. So to achieve this, we actually have to use an ND filter. Uh, now this is a, two, uh, a five stop variable ND filter, so it'll go between two and five. And all I have to do is just put this on the lens, on the front of the lens like so, and see where that gets us. Okay, so that's better, but you can see our ISO is still blinking. And if you look at the uh, EV meter or exposure meter here, you can see we're still roughly about one stop overexposed. Uh, so we're gonna have to dial in this variable ND until we get to zero. Now I'm just gonna do it slowly. You have the camera a moment to adjust. And right there should be roughly the same exposure that we had before when we were in shutter priority. However, I don't stop here. What I like to do is I like to give the camera a little bit of wiggle room for exposure, uh, particularly if it's a very bright day and you're walking in and out of shade and sun and indoors, outdoors. Uh, you need to get, give the camera some wiggle room so that it can lower the exposure if it needs to. And right now the light changed again, so we're at ISO 500. But uh, I like to have at least two stops of uh, range on a bright sunny day. Right now it's cloudy. I would prefer three stops of range. So if we were at a base ISO of 200 before, um, then I want to get up to at least ISO 800, which would be two stops. And if I can, three stops, which would be ISO 1600. So that way, if it gets very bright out, if the sun happens to peak out right now, uh, the camera can lower the ISO to maintain the same exposure, it has that wiggle room. So I'm going to adjust the variable ND filter until I get to at least ISO 800. Let's see where we're at. We're at ISO 800. So on a cloudy day, two stops I think is enough to maintain, uh, you know, a proper exposure. But if I needed to see if there's enough wiggle room, I can go to 1600 if I need to. And like I said, this is a two to five stop variable ND filter uh, on very very bright days. And very fast lenses, let's say you're using an f2 or an f1.4, uh, you may even need to stack ND filters or get a more powerful ND filter, uh, like a 10 stop. And as you can see, we now have a shallower depth of field at f2.8 than we did, say, when we were shooting at f8 in shutter priority mode. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my Panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter on this is an f4 lens so you can see what a wider field of view looks like compared, say, to the 12 millimeter. But also, I want to test the differences in image stabilization between MIS-1 and MIS-2. Uh, because one of the most common problems when you use wide-angle lenses is you kind of get that wobbly effect, particularly in the corners, when you're walking around uh, and doing this vlogging. Uh, also, um, you need to know that a lot of wide-angle lenses have like these bulbous uh, front elements and fixed lenses a lot of time as well. So it's difficult to attach. ND filters to lenses like this. So for a lot of uh, lenses, you're going to have to use shutter priority mode and just deal with the, um, you know, the, the very deep depth of field, which, you know, it's going to be the case anyway when you're using wide angle lenses. But there are adapters for um, wide angle lenses, so you can attach ND filters, but that gets kind of a little unwieldy. 
And if there's any wide angle lenses out there that you can attach an ND filter to, uh, I think maybe the Panasonic 9mm uh, might have that option. So you might want to consider that lens. Uh, and it's very fast, right, at f1.8. All right, so I'm at uh, 7 millimeters now. And as you can see, the field of view is much wider. But because I cannot use my ND filter, um, I need to go back into shutter priority mode. So let me do that. So as you can see now, because I can't put the ND filter on, we're back to you know very uh, small apertures like f8, f11. Now, let me go ahead and just uh, kind of walk from here back to the fence line and compare MIS-1 with MIS-2 image stabilization. And what I want you to look for is particularly in the corners where the trees are, uh, if they wobble or not. And they will because I've already done a couple of tests and you'll see it for yourself. All right, now I'm in MIS-1 and I have the camera at arm's length at seven millimeters, shutter priority, all that good stuff. And we're gonna walk back this way. And again, uh, just watch kind of the corners uh, of the frame and see if um, we're getting kind of those uh, jello effect in the corners. And you know, my grass is very lumpy, so this is a good test. All right, now I'm in MIS-2 and again, holding at arm's length. And I'm just gonna walk back to the fence line and then walk back. And you wanna look for any kind of jelloing effect in the corners, which in MIS-2 is, uh, yeah, it exists, right? It's, it's a thing. So even though I think that in MIS-1 with digital and sensor shift emulsation, um, there's still a little bit of jello, but it's mitigated quite a bit versus say, when we're in MIS-2 like we are now, that jello effect is more prominent. And here's a quick side-by-side -side of the image stabilizations in MIS off, MIS one, and MIS two. And as you can see, the image stabilization in the OM one is really amazing. Now, right now I'm still in MIS two, but I have the camera on a tripod. But what I want you to notice is it's a much wider field of view. See, I can put my hands almost all the way out and they still don't reach the end of the frame. So let me put it back to MIS one with the uh, sensor shift and digital stabilization so you can see the difference. So now we're in MIS-1, and as you can see, if I put my hands out, they're almost touching the edges of the frame. Uh, so we've lost about 10 or 15% of our field of view. So our native seven millimeters is now acting more like maybe nine or 10 millimeters. All right, and one last thing I'll talk about on the video side, then we'll get into the audio very quickly. But uh, when it comes to picking a color profile, like. This whole time I've been recording in the muted color profile with auto gradation. And, you know, it's really a personal preference. You can choose natural or uh, monochrome or vivid, whatever you think is best for the scene. Uh, but generally speaking, muted, uh, you can still grade just a tiny bit, maybe add a little more contrast and saturation if you want in post-processing. But I think straight out of camera, the muted uh, color profile with the um, auto gradation looks best for vlogging but i'll just show you very quickly what the natural color profile looks like and if you want to do some serious grading you'd want to record in the OM log 400 and this is what the natural color profile looks like with auto gradation and just for fun this is what the monochrome looks like with auto gradation and this is the OM log profile that you would have to grade so the colors are going to look very flat but let me go ahead and apply some grading to it, and this is what it would look like. And then last but not least are the audio settings, and I wanted to show you what I use for audio if I'm doing vlogging, and that's these little uh, Comica Venmo C microphones. So, and, you know, it's really tiny. You probably didn't even notice I was wearing this the entire time. I just had it tucked here under my shirt like I have another one now. And, uh, you know, it comes with uh, two transmitters and a receiver, and when you put them in this case, it'll charge them up, and you know, the case has its own battery that you have to charge as well. And this is what it looks like uh, on the camera itself. This is the receiver with a nice, uh, you know, OLED display. But uh, I have a full review on this and I'll put a link to it. But what makes this mic really special is the uh, noise canceling feature. So yeah, it's unbelievable because my backyard is so noisy with helicopters and airplanes. Um, let me Let me just play you a clip right now from my review. Now I have the microphone back on in noise canceling mode. And uh, how does it sound? I'm gonna stop talking so you can hear the ambient noise from the microphone. 
Wow, this is the quietest my yard has ever been. All right, now let's just listen to the ambient noise uh, coming into the microphones of camera B over here. Now, when I was out here a little earlier doing some testing, all right, so what your goal is when you set your audio up in your camera is you want the level meters to be bouncing mostly in the white area and then just occasionally peeking into the reds. So you need to make adjustments in camera and to whatever microphone you might have attached if it's adjustable. So let's go into the menu and go over to the movie menu, then scroll over to page uh, five, go into sound recordings, and then go into recording volume. And built-in microphone, you can kind of ignore. I don't recommend ever use built-in mic for vlogging. Uh, and then uh, the microphone itself, the input is for this uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, this is where you want to adjust this. And rule of thumb is you want to have your input levels here as low as possible and the output levels on whatever microphone you're using as high as possible. Uh, and that eliminates any kind of internal noise that the camera might be generating. And if you have a good quality uh, microphone system, it won't be generating any internal noise on its own. And for my use, I set it to minus three because I'm kind of mixed uh, between studio and vlogging outdoors. So this is what worked for me in this combination, but you're going to have to experiment a little with whatever microphone system you have set up. Now, if you're not using a wireless microphone or a powered microphone, like, like maybe this uh, lav mic, that, or I'm sorry, this boom mic that I like to use sometimes, uh, you're going to need to turn on plug-in power to get sound because typically condenser microphones, you know, will require plug-in power. So if you're not getting sound, it's probably because this is turned off. And then as far as recording rate goes, 48, 16 bit is fine. Uh, the 96, 24, you know, nothing special. And I, you know, nobody's gonna be able to tell a difference. And if you do need to record higher quality audio, uh, don't ever do it in camera, get, you know, a separate uh, high quality auto recording device. And those are all my recommendations for setting up your OM-1 for vlogging. And of course, you can extrapolate probably to the EM-1 Mark III and the EM-1 Mark II without too much difficulty. Just the stuff will be in a different place in the menu. And uh, generally speaking, the core settings that I talk about really apply to any camera that you might be using. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a donation on links below because they help me to continue making videos like this for you. And they are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.